this is joint work with uh, Wu Lei and uh, Jin Dong from, uh, from the same university. So today I'm going to, going to talk about our recent work on compiler testing uh, with live code annotation. So before diving into the technical details, I would like to show you a real world GCC bug. So in this one, the test case in the box is actually well defined based on the C language standard. So normally the program should execute uh, normally. And uh, when you compile with GCC without any optimization, the executable uh, works as expected. But when you enable the optimization uh, with dash O3, which is the highest uh, optimization level in GCC, the executable will exit and crash. So that this is unexpected. Our vision on compiler testing is that given a C program P, if we which is well defined, okay? So if we can design a magical transformation which is able to derive a set of uh, variants which are semantically equivalent to the original C program but uh, syntactically different, then we can use these programs to, to stress test the compilers. And since they are equivalent, so the compilers should behave exactly the same. And the compiled executable should output the same. However, deriving equivalent programs is not that easy. So first, it's very hard to generate syntactically different but semantically equivalent test program. And the second is that even if we get a program variant, we are not so sure whether it's indeed equivalent. So both problems are long-standing hard issues. In 2014, our Google proposed the concept of equivalence modular inputs. So instead of using the equivalence, which is defined over the entire space of the input program. We now focus on a single input. So suppose that we have a program variant PK, and if we use the input to render that program PK, if the output is the same as uh, uh, by running P with the same input I, we say that P and the PK are, uh, are EMI to each other. That this is a relaxed version of the equivalence, so we only focus on a single input. So even if you provide another different input, say J, the output of the two programs, P and PK, might not be the same, but it doesn't matter. So the insight here is that we exploit the close interplay play between the dynamic program execution and the static compilation. So for compilers, the compiler should guarantee that any program transformation in performed in the optimizers should be semantics preserving for all the input of the program and the compilation. But uh, when we are testing a compiler, we only use a, use, a, use a program. We do not exhaust the entire input space. We only use several inputs to run the program to check whether the compiler performed uh, correctly or not. So, the relaxation of the equivalence makes it very easy to derive uh, EMI variants. So the first uh, EMI realization is called Aureo. It takes two steps to derive an uh, EMI variant. So let the graph denote the control flow graph of the seed program. And we run this program with the input I. We profile the coverage of the statements. So the green parts of the graph denote the executed parts, and the gray parts denote the unexecuted parts, also, no, uh, also called as uh, data code regions. Then the Orion can randomly prune statements from the data code regions. We can delete the entire data code regions, or we can delete some branches, so like uh, similar to these two graphs. And when we then, uh, and then when we run the two graphs with the same input, because we only mutated the data code regions, and we use the same input to run this program, so the mutated data code regions still remain dead, and the two programs are expected to output the same result. Therefore, the two program programs are EMI to the original seed program. So the ORA is pretty effective. So within 11 months, we found 147 bugs, which are confirmed in GCC and LVM. And later, at Uppsala last year, we proposed Athena, which is an advanced version of uh, uh, Orion, but it's still uh, based on the data code mutation. So now, 
in Asina, we not only delete statements from the data core regions, but we also insert a new uh, code into the data core regions. However, there are still some limitations of data code uh, region mutation. Because the first is the search space is limited by the number of data code regions. For example, in the extreme case, a program might have no data code regions. Therefore, the two, the two tools, Aura and Asina, will have no room to play with their uh, mutation strategies. Second is that the compiler might be smart enough to identify the data code regions. So even if you mutate the data code regions, it might be later removed by the compiler. And the last limitation is that if a compiler bug is triggered, and uh, suppose that the bug is a miscompilation, so the bug only manifests in the data code regions. Since you are running the mutant with the same input, and uh, there is no way for you to observe the failure of the compiler. Therefore, in this work, we propose a solution. So instead of mutating the data code regions, now we mutate the live code regions. So the key challenge is here that since we are mutating the live code region, we are actually, the code will be executed and we are actually altering the program states. Therefore, we need to, we face two challenges. The first one is we need to make sure that the mutated code is still valid based on the C program language standard. This is especially important because we are targeting compiler bugs, including crashings, crashes and also miscompilations. But when a compiler finds that the code is undefined, it can do whatever it wants. So this, is, this will make us very hard to find these kind of bugs. And the second challenge is that since we are altering the program space, so it's very difficult to maintain the EMI property. So in this paper, we propose a new EMI framework. Suppose that we are trying to mutate a live code region at program point L in a seed program. So we start from P and we instrument the profiling code into P at program point L. And then we run the instrumented version of the program to collect an environment at program point L. And this environment is actually a mapping from each variable to its all observed values. And we refer to this as a variable valuations. And then we pass the uh, environment to a synthesizer to synthesize a, a EMI code snippet. And later we merge the snippet into P and produce a EMI variant. Let's take a close look at the synthesizer. So The interface for the synthesizer is that the input is includes three components. So the first one is the environment, which is collected at the profiling stage. So it, as I said, it records the uh, mapping from variable to all their observed values at runtime. And the second uh, uh, parameter is the statement at program point. And uh, the last one is the all the in-scope variables accessible at program point L. And the output is the EMI code snippet. But uh, this code snippet, the synthesizer should make sure that the code snippet preserves the following two properties. The first one is that if we run the program with the same input i, the introduced EMI code snippet should be well defined. It should, it should not exhibit any undefined behavior. Second is that the code snippet should uh, restore the program states so that we can make sure that the generated variant is still EMI to the original program. Okay. And in this work, uh, we realized this into a prototype named Hermes, and uh, we propose three example synthesizers. And uh, please note that this part is quite extensible, so in the future you can design whatever templates you have in mind and uh, implement it in, in this framework. So next I will show you the three synthesizers. So the first one is pretty str straightforward. 
this is the code skeleton that we want to insert into the program function L. So it's quite simple. So we just uh, randomly generate an if or while statement whose conditional is always false with respect to the observed environment. Okay. Then in the body, we just uh, insert any arbitrary compilable code. So the compilable code could contain undefined behavior, but we don't care because the conditional is always false. So the code is not executed. We, we are just trying to fool the compiler. Another point I would like to mention is that the false predicate always, although it's always false with respect to the environment, but if you change the input to another one, the, it might be true. So from the perspective of compilers, the compiler doesn't know that uh, this is always true or always false. Here is one example. So I would like to insert a, a code snippet here. So I instrumented the profiling code and collect the variable valuations. For example, here A is always zero. So then I, I generate a if statement which of which the conditional is A smaller than zero. So this predicate is always false. So the following code, so the following body is not executed. Even though the, uh, here we have an undefined behavior. It's a index out of bound, Eggbury access. So, so the next uh, mutation strategy is always true guard. So let the S denote the statement at L. So we just synthesize a true predicate to surround the statement S. So, so next, when you run the program with the same input, the S will be still executed because the conditional or the if statement is always true. So this is an example. So here, uh, we instrument the profiling code here and then find that G is always zero, okay? And then we synthesize the if statement by negating the G, so which is always true. And then we surround the if return statement. So here, from the perspective of compilers, the compiler might be confused because now this function actually may have no return statement. And uh, this triggers a miscompilation bug in GCC. The last one is a pretty, uh, uh, is a little bit complex. So the general idea of this template is to, is to mutate a variable V, okay? But the general idea is that we first mutate the variable V, but uh, at the exit of the code snippet, we restore the value. Specifically, we create a auxiliary variable which is named the backup. So first we initialize backup with a random value. And uh, then we store the value of V to backup and uh, at the exit we uh, restore the V. And we also intentionally complicate the control flow of the template. For example, we first introduce always a true predicate so that, uh, so that the body will be executed and uh, here we also introduce always a false predicate. And uh, in the body, we just try to use the V. This is quite, is, it's very critical because the use of the V uh, prohibits, prevents the compiler from optimizing the assignment of V here. So this is just to confuse the compiler that V is used, not, it, it, sh it should be there after optimization. So here is one example, suppose I want to uh, generate an EMS script here, and uh, after the profiling, I find uh, that the environment is shown as this. So later, I synthesize a code snippet like this, and this will also trigger a compiler bug. So next, I would like to talk about uh, how we address another challenge: that how can we, ca how can you make sure that the generated code is well defined? So the key component is how to generate valid expressions. We propose a bottom-up approach. So in our synthesis algorithm, we have a work list, which is basically a list of valid expressions. And this is also the environment, invariant of our synthesis algorithm. So initially, the work list only contains in-scope variables. So by definition, all these variables are well-defined and uh, they should have no uh, undefined behaviors. And uh, gradually we reduce the work list to a single expression. For example, like this one. So 
Let's, let me walk you with an example. So suppose I would like to synthesize this expression and this is the uh, environment and that program point. At first, I will sample several variables to construct, to initialize the work list. So in this case, I have B, C, E, F in the list, okay? So I started the synthesis and uh, in the first iteration, I randomly sampled two variables from the list, which is B and E. I also randomly proposed a binary operator, which is a division. Then I check whether the binary expression B divided by E is valid or not. But when you look at the environment here, you find that E is zero. So it's a division by zero error. Therefore, we reject this proposal and the proposal another one. So in this time, we sample C and B. We also propose a binary operator logical end. And we find that the expression C and, and B is valid. So we accept it. Then what to do next? Then later, we update the work list. So we first remove the B and C from the work list. And we add the valid binary expression C and, and B into the list. So now the list has three elements. So it's one element fewer than the previous one. Eventually we will reach a point where there is a single element in the work list. And this is the expression we would like to get. So let's talk about the evaluation. So we, we ran the Hermes for 12 months. We found uh, 160 confirmed bugs in GC and LVM, of which more than 128 are already fixed. It's pretty effective. And, uh, late, and next, I would like to show you a detailed comparison between the Orion, Asina, and the Hermes. Okay. The first dimension is saturation. So both Orion and Asina have saturated for a long time. So recently we can only find a few bugs with these two. Okay. But the Hermes we can still find uh, like around 10 bugs per month. And this is the same as the bug detection rate reported in our paper which is several months ago. Next, I would like to conduct another, another uh, objective comparison between the three tools in terms of line coverage, okay? So the baseline is we use systems to generate 100 uh, seed programs. We compile these programs with GCC and LVM. And 34% uh, of, of the code, GCC, code, GCC code is covered and 21% uh, for LVM. And then we use uh, Orion to, to derive 1,000 uh, Yamaha variants to stress test the GCC and the LVM. And we found that there is no improvement. Okay. So later we use Asina to derive variants. We found that uh, it's, uh, there is a slightly improvement, but uh, not much. And the last we use Hermes to derive 1,000 variants. And we uh, found that in terms of percentage, uh, there is actual 4.8% uh, for GCC and 1.8% uh, for uh, LVM. You might argue that the, the percentage is pretty low. It's pretty marginal. But I would like to stress that the code base of GCC and LVM is pretty large. It's over 1 million lines of code. So when you convert the percentage to uh, absolute numbers or lines, you will see that the Hermes can trigger additional 20K lines of code uh, for GCC and uh, 10K lines of code for G LVM. So in this work, we propose a new YAMI framework while live, live code mutation. So we also propose an algorithm to build valid expressions so that we can uh, nicely address the challenges introduced by the mutation or live code. Our evaluation is pretty effective. We found 160 confirmed bugs in GCC and LVM, over which uh, in 12 months. And now we continue finding bugs. So at the end of the talk, I would like to stress that our contribution and uh, testing efforts have been received and uh, acknowledged in the uh, 
LVM community. So this is the this is quoted from the LVM 3.9 release notes. Thank you.